Welcome to Charts Today. My name is David Linton and today's edition for Thursday the 10th of March comes to you from London. Um, and just a reminder that you can subscribe to Charts Today at chartstoday.com so you can see this uh, broadcast every morning. I've been doing it for years uh, and it's just something I do every morning. It takes me a few minutes and hopefully you find it valuable just sharing a view of what's happening in the markets and the and the, the key things that are going on on the charts. Uh, so just go to chartstoday.com and sign up. Of course, if you're using Updata, uh, you will see it appearing in your Updata news. Uh, so that's that's quite key there as well. Uh, so um, I'm wearing my flower, the sunflower, national flower of Ukraine, uh, the largest producer of sunflower oil in the world. And uh, Gosh, hearing the harrowing stories of what's going on in Ukraine, um, just imagining how these people are living with no gas, water or or power. Uh, temperatures are dropping. It's freezing cold, uh, minus 10, minus 15 temperatures in places in Ukraine uh, today. It's just hard to imagine. I've turned my heating off, uh, just living um, with the temperature a lot lower. I think it's something we're all going to have to do. Um, and you know, in terms of demand, that's going to be quite a key. And you know, one of the things on on LinkedIn, I post on LinkedIn quite a lot, um, is you know, I've been talking about uh, storage levels, uh, and I did just repost this morning saying I'm really not sure how the picture has changed. Um, and if we look at some of those storage charts, this was the chart I posted uh, last week. We were at. Uh, this is just um, the uh, data from GIE and Updata, and I put a seasonality envelope on. We were at 28% last week, we're at 25% this week for German storage, and this is how it looks going into the next year. So I've just sort of said to myself, what's changed in terms of the last week? Um, and, you know, next winter is still going to be a massive issue unless um, we see this war ending very quickly. Most wars tend to go on much longer than people think. And so we're seeing real uh, potential issues running into next winter. A lot of injection has to happen in uh, Germany at very high prices. Um, same in Austria. Uh, we're sitting very low in Austria at the moment, sitting at uh, just under 15% capacity. And we've obviously got a couple of two or three more weeks to go until we reach the minimum. Um, and the same in Holland. Uh, so really quite interesting looking at those storage charts. Uh, and it just says to me, you know, what's changed? And of course, we've had these massive spike highs. Um, the big feature yesterday was the oil price falling low. And you know, one of the things I want to um, just talk about is, you know, we will, you often see counter trend moves that are bigger than the moves within trend. It's just this sort of reactive move. And this now leaves us with some pricing information. And if I just go and look at the, the high low levels and put those on the charts, I've now got extreme highs and extreme lows, 105, 133. And really now it's a case of where will oil go? Now, shorter term, we've come below the cloud. Longer term, we're still here. We've got upside targets. We've got a reactive target on the one minute chart to 117 today. We are going to probably trade in this range now for a little while. Uh, but this does set us up on the longer term charts for um, a, a new target. And that's what we have to watch. Of course, if we go below this level, we activate a downside target. And then we'll be starting to look at what the downside targets are saying. But for the moment, I mean, this is all related to OPEC making an announcement yesterday. But for the moment, um, this is the new trading range. And uh, in fact, you can go right down. So 110 would be a level that I'd be watching now because that was the spike low a couple of times yesterday and this morning. And now are we going to build a base and move higher and watch for new targets building on your systems. Remember, this is my one minute, my 60 minute and my daily. And we put out the crude reports every morning. So uh, that just helps clients see um, where we're going in terms of crude oil. So that's really um, you know what's going on there. And I'll come back and look at power and gas prices uh, in a minute. But just looking at sort of the main markets. And I've been I've, I've actually been looking at my textbooks. Remember textbooks? People didn't really uh, in you know 30, 40 years ago, all we had was textbooks. Now they just sit on shelves unused. 
used, but I have found it quite interesting. I've been pulling out some old textbooks. This one, Money for Nothing by Roger Bootle, a nice signed copy he gave to me. Um, and, you know, The Death of Inflation, his book. And it's really interesting that, you know, tw the last 20 years we've been talking about the death of inflation. But now inflation's coming back. I've started to look at market cycles, and I'll be doing some posts today on that. Market cycles. Commodities have only really just got going um, when you look at some of the super cycles. And so it's really interesting going back to the texts. And if you've got the texts going back that long time, just have a flick through some really interesting diagrams and charts. And that just feeds um, a lot of what's going on in the market. So looking at the dollar, this is my long term, medium term and short term view of the market. Uh, we see the dollar index pushing higher. Um, and that is still, um, we, we've fallen back a little bit on the 60 minute chart, but on the daily and medium term charts, we're bullish. We keep saying that uh, the dollar is where the action is going to be this year. Um, the flight to quality is going to be quite key. Looking at the euro, we've had a bit of a recovery. We're back above the 110 level, but the fact is we went there and we've got these downside targets. Uh, and this one to 95 parity on the medium term chart is one we're watching. And we did put out a report on the euro uh, a couple of weeks ago. So um, just saying how low the euro could go. Sterling sitting at 131.67. And that's recovered again uh, against the dollar, just pulling back a little bit. But on the whole, we're seeing we're seeing weak euro, sterling in the middle, strong dollar. That's the picture for this year. A lot of the moves will happen in between all of that, but that's what's happening. Bitcoin had a very strong day yesterday. We've re we're retracing some of that today. We're seeing a lot of volatility uh, in Bitcoin. We are just finding cloud support. The key thing is we hold this 30,000 level, which gives us the activated upside targets to $83,000 on both these charts. So that's quite key. The S&P 500 index had um, a recovery of 2.5 seven percent that's really um, still left us below the cloud one big day again in a downtrend one big up day doesn't make a new bull market so um, it's too early to say whether this is the beginning of a recovery we've got an upside target here will we activate it uh, we've got these medium and long-term downside targets now hanging over us so a lot has to happen um, and again on the cloud we need to get back above 4,500 on the S&P really to be confident that we're back in recovery mode looking at the futures today I mean just look at the Nasdaq the Nasdaq target we've still got 25 percent further to fall on the Nasdaq based on that target so it's a brave person who's going to go against that. Looking at the um, the S and P future, uh, we're down 0.2 percent this morning, uh, down 0.3 percent on the um, the Nasdaq future, and we're still holding above 30 on the VIX, the uh, the volatility there. So that's really quite key. European markets are a little bit lower again this morning. The DAX had a very strong day yesterday. Obviously, very. Uh, 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 susceptible to what's going on in Russia. Asia bounced because it didn't get the benefit of the bounce yesterday. We'll look at the commodities in a minute. Corn continues to rise. Gold has fallen back below the 2000 level, but we did put out a gold report. Uh, that, so that's my um, UK gas and power stream. It just uh, We did put out a report yesterday with some very big upside targets. Look uh, in your system there and you'll see that uh, that gold report as well. Gold, how high, high can it go? So that's, that's in your system there. Uh, and and looking at some of the other things that have been going on, 10-year yield sitting in the 190s, uh, so that's quite strong as well. Now, looking at the energy mix, we talked about oil. Uh, just to watch that and watch the targets. Uh, coal sitting at $230, still looking very strong. Doing this seesaw here, and you can see how these uh, lines have been left on my tracker charts. Emissions down this morning. Here's the new range on emissions, 56 and 74. This is great the way I can just read those off the chart like that. And if we look at gas prices falling again this morning, um, so really quite interesting that we're looking back to levels that we saw last week. Will this provide us a four floor? We've got upside targets. Watch these on your OTC charts if you're trading. And the same on MBP. And again, we've got the key levels there. German power is actually just holding up this morning. Got to get above that 180 level on German power, really. Um, so that's going to be quite key. But that's it for today. Until tomorrow, happy charting. Sign up at Charts today and spare a thought for the people of Ukraine in this new freezing cold weather that they're about to endure. Turn your heating right down. Just reduce our demand. Stop funding Putin. Until tomorrow, 
happy charting. See you then.